As multiple suicide drones made their way to Ain al-Assad Air Base in Iraq during the first days of January 2022, intending to wreak havoc among the U.S. troops stationed there, the devices were abruptly stopped by a Centurion Counter-Rocket Artillery and Mortar, or CRAM, system, which brought them down with ruthless efficiency. Footage from the incident shows how the Centurion's 20mm Vulcan cannon fire and an accompanying missile destroyed drones with pinpoint accuracy. The scale and reach of this type of attack has led the military to look for new weapon systems that can effectively shoot down enemy drones while on the field, and the Centurion certainly passed the test on that fateful day. Still, the enemy did not give up that easily, and planned for a more potent attack the following day. Anniversary Attacks At around 4 a.m. on January 4th, 2022, United States military personnel standing on guard duty at Baghdad's International Airport noticed something unusual. The early days of January were loaded with meaning, as they marked the second anniversary of the assassination of Iranian General Qassam Soleimani, the leader of Iran's most loyal warriors, the Quds Force. This group was part of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, or IRGC, which had been widely blamed for numerous terrorist activities outside Iran. General Soleimani and Abu Mahdi al muhandis the deputy commander of the Popular Mobilization Forces Militia Group, had lost their lives to an American drone strike near the Baghdad airport two years earlier. The soldiers stationed at the airport could hear a buzzing sound coming from the sky, albeit barely. It was also tricky for a sentry to see them, but two small objects were flying close to the borders of the Ain al-Assad airbase. Minutes later, the sky over the airport lit up, and the hellish echo of a minigun firing ran across the area. Two unidentified unmanned aircraft had broken into the airport perimeter and were detected by the defensive system. In a matter of seconds, the two hostile drones were shot down. They did not stand a chance against the Centurion Counter-Rocket Artillery and Mortar, or CRAM, defensive system. The firing burst of the system's 20mm Vulcan Gatling cannon got rid of the threat without any inconveniences or casualties. Footage later published by the U.S. and Iraqi security forces showed the quick response of the Centurion and its defensive capabilities against all sorts of threats against its area of coverage. Hours after the incident, the U.S.-led coalition confirmed the accident and informed that no damage or injuries resulted from it. The Centurion at the Baghdad Diplomatic Support Center had done its job as intended. Looking for an explanation. Iraqi security forces indicated that the objective of the attack was the airport area where U.S. advisors operate. They also provided pictures of the drone's remains after being shot down. The slogans, Soleimani's Revenge and Revenge Operations for Our Leaders could be seen on the wings of the kamikaze drones. The wreckage of the fixed-wing devices was thoroughly inspected to see if they were carrying any special ordnance, but none was found. Although no extremist group claimed responsibility for the attack, the messages the drones carried made it clear that it was launched by the extremist militias that seek retaliation for what the U.S. forces did two years ago to their leaders. However, the thirst for revenge was not over yet. In less than 24 hours, another wave of suicide drones approached the airbase, except that this time they were carrying explosives. Hours later, a statement from the U.S.-led coalition went public. It read, quote, Two fixed-wing drones rigged with explosives were engaged and destroyed by defensive capabilities at the Iraqi Ain al-Assad airbase early this morning. The attempted attack was unsuccessful. All forces are accounted for. The Tuesday attack was no coincidence. The militias were making a statement. They still wanted the Americans to pay for what they did. However, they failed again. A second video then went viral on social media. In the early seconds, a missile detonates close to one of the fixed-wing drones. The small-scale explosion then sends the hostile unmanned aircraft into an uncontrollable spin. Shortly after, the enemy drone breaks up into pieces and falls to the ground in a cloud of smoke and flames. The explosives that the drone was carrying went off seconds later. The second suicide drone was torn to pieces by the bursts of the CRAM at Ain al-Assad Air Base, leaving behind a few traces of debris that got lost in the air. Although the American forces stationed at the airport did not specify the nature of the surface-to-air missile used to destroy the target, 
Specialists have speculated that it may have been a heat-seeking FIM-92 Stinger or a Hellfire missile. Effective drone countermeasures. In February of 2021, during a speech at the Middle East Institute, Marine General Kenneth McKenzie Jr. said that drones posed the biggest threat to U.S. troops in the Middle East since IEDs, or improvised explosive devices. He added, quote, The growing threat posed by these systems, coupled with our lack of dependable networked capabilities to counter them, is the most concerning tactical development since the rise of the improvised explosive device in Iraq. McKenzie explained that although U.S. air defense systems can effectively detect and strike down large drones, Things get complicated when dealing with smaller drones that can be purchased almost anywhere for less than $1,000. He then remarked, quote, These systems are inexpensive, easy to modify and weaponize, and easy to proliferate. They provide adversaries the operational ability to surveil and target U.S. and partner facilities while affording plausible deniability and a disproportionate return on the investment, all in our adversaries' favor. The statement came after several drone attacks by ISIS forces between 2017 and 2019 were identified. During firefights, ISIS used commercial drones to drop mortar rounds into Iraqi security forces and also used them to attack facilities that housed essential assets for the military personnel. The rise in popularity of drones have also become a problem for the military, government, and security forces, as the versatility of drones has been exploited not just by terrorists, but also by criminals worldwide. In Mexico, for example, multiple cartels and sicarios have used drones to spy on Mexican army soldiers and drop explosives on top of them. They've even attempted to use drones to smuggle drugs into uncharted territories. So far, the most effective asset in the U.S. arsenal is the Centurion, or CRAM. The Centurion is the land-based version of the phalanx weapon system employed by the U.S. Navy. It's equipped with a 20mm Vulcan cannon and an array of missiles such as stingers that provide a well-rounded defense against multiple types of weapon systems, like rockets and drones. In addition, the FIM-92 Stinger is another effective weapon to fight off unmanned enemy aircraft. It is the MANPADS, or Man Portable Air Defense System, used by most Western militaries around the world. The Stinger's heat-seeking capability, coupled with a proximity fuse, can have devastating effects against any threat that poses an obstacle to infantry forces. The Army has also experimented with Humvee-mounted M1097 Avenger short-range air defense systems. These vehicles are equipped with a 50 caliber machine gun and stingers to destroy hostile drones. Also, the Army has been testing the radar-guided AGM-114L Longbow Hellfire missiles to bolster short-range air defense systems with the AH-64 helicopters as an effective asset that can fire the missiles against upcoming drone threats. For the time being, the situation in the Middle East remains uncertain, and there are over 2,500 American troops stationed in the region, leading the international military coalition fighting ISIL. Most personnel maintain the roles of advisors and trainers for Iraqi security forces. Still, the men have been ordered to stay alert at all times with the increasing threats of the radical militias. Thank you for watching my video. Please like and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels to find more exciting historical content. And let us know in the comments below what you think of the defensive capabilities of Centurion and its defensive arsenal. Stay tuned.